To add data to a table, use the insert command. Let's see this in action by populating the table students with the data. Insert into students. This line tells MySQL where to insert the following data. Then, within parentheses, the four column names are listed ID student, name, surname, and email, all separated by commas. This tells MySQL that these are the fields into which the data is to be inserted. You could skip fields that are auto incremented and fields with a default value if you wish to use the same default value. Since ID student is auto incremented field, there is no need to specify value for it. The second line of each insert command contains the keyword values, followed by three strings within parentheses and separated by commas. This supplies MySQL with the three values to be inserted into the three columns previously specified. Remember this, each item of data will be inserted into the corresponding column in a one-to-one -one correspondence. If you accidentally listed the column in a different order from the data, the data would go into the wrong columns and the number of columns must match the number of data items. Now, to display the table's contents, type the following command. Select asterisk from students semicolon. Don't worry about the select command for now. We'll cover it later before the end of this tutorial. Now, to update existing data, use update command, followed by table name students. Set. This keyword is used to specify which field will be updated. In this case, all entries in the table will be updated because I didn't provide a condition that will match the elements you want to update. Where keyword is used as condition that will match all the elements you want to update and it will change the specified columns for all the matches found. The where keyword is very powerful and important to enter correctly an error could lead a command to the wrong rows or have no effect in cases where nothing matches the WHERE clause. WHERE clause considered to be the heart and soul of SQL. Also, if you do not provide a limit, all matches will be updated. So the limit qualifier enables you to choose how many rows to return or update or delete in a query. When you need to remove a row from a table, use the delete command. Its syntax is similar to the select command and allows you to narrow down the exact row or rows to delete using qualifiers, such as where and limit. Let's remove the entry whose surname is El Hayali. Delete from students where surname equal El Hayali. This example issues a delete command for all rows whose surname column contains the string L Hayali. So it's better to limit the result to one entry. So far, we've created a MySQL database and tables, populated them with the data. Now it's time to look at how these searches are performed and the various commands and qualifiers available. The operation you'll use most often is called SELECT. A SELECT is used to look for information in one or more tables that matches specific criteria. The basic syntax is as follows. SELECT SOMETHING FROM TABLE NAME semicolon. The something can be an asterisk, which means every column, or you can choose to select only certain columns. Select surname and name columns from students, semicolon. Order by sorts returned results by one or more columns in ascending or descending order. Note that an order by statement can accept several table fields that allow you to create several levels of ordering. For example, order by surname and name. Ascending would do a sorting of the data by surname, 
and if there were several entries with the same surname, those entries would be sorted by name. The group by section allows you to group results by a specific field, which is good for retrieving information about a group of data. For example, if you want to know how many students have the surname Al Hayali, you can issue the following query. The option having is quite similar to where, but runs at the end of the query. The having field allows you to use functions, whereas where does not. In the next tutorial, we will learn about indexes, the types of indexes, and the important role of the indexes.